Hi, we're going to use this tutorial to discuss how Reese's section calculates the torsional constant J. Now, if you were to flip open a textbook to see how to calculate torsional J just by hand, you're going to notice that there's a couple different equations to calculate this value, and those differ based on what type of shape you are solving for. Specifically, the difference is between open sections, such as this open U shape, and with closed sections, such as a closed tube shape, as shown here. A Riesa section also takes into account this difference when calculating torsional J, so it's very important that you take the correct approach in modeling your section before hitting the, the calculate button for your torsional J value, just to ensure that you get the correct calculation. For open shapes, it's a pretty simple calc. Basically, we just calculate the torsional J value of each of the individual pieces. So for instance, with this U shape, you see I have it built up of three individual rectangular pieces. So when I solve, it's going to calculate torsional J for each of these, and then it'll just sum them together for the total value. And that's reflected here in the status display dialog when you hit the J calc button. Here's the three individual solutions torsional J values, and then the summation for the overall shape. Now for closed, to, for closed sections, it's a little bit different because you want to make sure that the program truly understands that what you have is a closed shape. So with this closed tube I've built, you'll see again it's just built out of four individual rectangular sections, and I've pushed them up against one another, so visually it does look like a closed section, but you want to make sure that you use the new merge tool in order to truly tell the program that yes, these are merged and it is a fully closed section. With version 2.0 of Risa section, we added in the new merge and explode buttons, the new tools, to allow us to do just this to get a much more accurate torsional J value. And those two buttons are right up here at the top of your screen. Currently, explode is grayed out because it's not available since the, I have not merged the section yet. But here's the merge button just to the left of that. And you'll see that if I click that button, my four individual pieces are going to come together into one solid tube. And if I wanted to go back and make any edits or additions to the shape, I can always again click that explode button and we'll go back to the four individual pieces. Now I do want to leave it merged for now because it's important that I do that for my torsional J calculation. So when I run the torsional J value now, you're going to see you come back with just one torsional J value instead of the summation of parts because we're no longer using the open section approach. When I have merged the section, the program is now going to calculate torsional J by actually integrating over the finite element mesh and then calculating the torsional J value from the integration across the length of the shape. And that's the same approach that you'd use if you were to calculate it by hand using the equations out of the textbook. Now if that value is not exactly the same as what you calculate by hand and you'd like to override it, you can always easily do so in the properties dialog. You see down here in the bottom right hand corner in the properties dialog, there are some values that are highlighted in black and others that are grayed out. Any of the values that are highlighted in black are available to be overwritten by you should you choose to. So if I wanted to round off my torsional J value to an even 900, I could easily do so simply by selecting it and typing that in. Now when I save the file, the new torsional J value will save with the file, and then should I choose to export that to Risa 3D or Risa 4 for use in my code check uh, design work of my overall model, that the, those code checks are going to use this updated torsional J value that I've just entered in. There is one case where we do not use the integration method to calculate the torsional J, and that's with the database shapes. So these are any of the shapes that you choose from this menu here, the RISA Hot Roll Database Table. And these are all just the shapes that you're going to read in specifically from, again, the databases. So this is anything that you're going to read in from your ASC design manual or any of the similar foreign code uh, databases that are published with the design manuals. With those codes, as you know, the torsional J values have already been calculated for each of the sections and are published, so we go ahead and just read those in as the torsional J value should you click the torsional J button, or excuse me, the calculate torsional J button for any of those shapes. Thanks for listening.